Well, compared to this place, you could almost fit the Millennium Dome in your back pocket. Welcome to the Excel Arena in London's Docklands. It is absolutely huge. Exhibition hall after exhibition hall. But believe me, tonight, it'll be no exhibition fight for Audley Harrison. For the first time in his professional career, he's up against somebody who really could push him to the limit. But to give you an indication of just how big this place is, there's actually a conference hall here for each and every one of Audley Harrison's incarnations. Getting hot, thinking when they pop, my name drop. Ain't gonna rock the spot, but they got see you with my team top. Rap toss the pot, what you saying ain't mine, so it doesn't mean a lot bigger. When they go by this, my pockets get bigger. Money legal, to keep my hand off the gun trigger. Pick up your eardrum, not your purse for my bank account. Funds need lots of ones, about a million of them. Retired when about 30, now the only time I got them in yards when my hands dirty. Part in the fridge, but call metallic. Ron's Barry, from here to Napa Valley. Squash race, make page, make no mistakes, I hate fakes. We'll think I got time to waste. Check it. If you're wasting my time, don't be surprised if I rock you. If you drop dime, I'm a mom. Time waits for no one, and everybody got to go. You think you got forever? You walk around real slow. Hesitate if you want to get caught out late. It's moving too quick, I ain't got time to waste. Time waits for no one, and everybody got to go. You think you got forever? You walk around real slow. Hesitate if you want to get caught out late. It's moving too quick, I ain't got time to waste. Yeah. So how will Audi look in the ring tonight? Well, the man seeking to ruffle his feathers is 25-year-old Mark Krentz from Chesterfield with a record of 11 fights and 11 victories. And casting an ever-discerning eye over proceedings will be marvellous Marvin Hagler. Before we talk about tonight's fight, let's go back a month and that victory over Julius well, Long. First of all, John, yeah. can I just say it's, it's great work with BBC again and also with you. <laughs> I'm not sure how relevant that is, Marvin, but tell us, going back a month, right. Julius Long... Was that a good victory for Audley? Who was he fighting against? Well, you know, uh, I got something funny about that fight because Julius Long was awkward, big, you know, he went down real hard, but he's fighting a different opponent tonight, somebody that's supposed to be able to box and hopefully got a lot more skills than what, uh, what Julius Long had. So uh, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see if this guy is trained properly enough uh, that can kind of kind of confuse uh, uh, Harrison a little bit tonight. Now, Krentz has taken this fight at just over a week's notice. He fought 10 days ago. How wise is that? I think it's a good move on his part because he's still fresh. He just come off a big win, so he's, he's confident. And, uh, you know, and he just knows now. But the only thing that is different about this fight is that he's fighting a different style type of fighter. Uh, he's fighting uh, Audrey Harrison, which is a southpaw, which uh, my mistake in the last fight with, uh, <laughs> with uh, Julius Long. But... You can see that Audrey Harrison still got that quick speed and that nice lightning uh, left hand. This is what I'm worried about for Krentz. He's got to watch out for that. But the great thing about Krentz, of course, is he had to take this fight because he, you know, he's, he's got nothing to lose and everything to gain. It's a great opportunity for him. He just come off the big fight, like I said, and uh, anything can happen in the ring. It only takes a second. Hopefully that Harrison is paying attention to his game and go out there and try to put this guy away. If this guy here, if he wins this fight, Beating the Olympic champion, it's a big move for him. OK, well, let's hear from both the fighters, starting with Audley. What are you expecting of Mark Krentz tonight? Um, well, Mark Krentz, you know, he's an unbeaten fighter with 11 fights, 11 victories. Um, former national champion like myself, former England international like myself. And definitely, for him taking the fight, a lot of respect has got to go to him. They've obviously seen something in me that they think they can exploit. He's obviously got ambition to step in with his unbeaten record. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a good kind of box fighter. And uh, he's going to show me something different that I haven't encountered before as a professional. You have a very good record, 11 out of 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. And by the end of tonight, it's going to be 12 out of 12. How do you view the contest, then? You're going to win? I'm going to win, yeah, of course. I'm going to win everything I do, I do it to win. Boxers always say that, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> probably, but I do, everything. He thinks you've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. taking this contest tonight but then I suppose he would say that what do you say well I'd say he's not he wouldn't be unreasonable in his thinking to say that uh, you've got a guy who's 11 and 0 some people regard him as one of the brightest prospects in the country up north and he's 11 and 0 and I'm 4 and 0 so obviously there's a risk element involved on my part and on my team's part where we say you're 4 and 0 let's take on a guy who's unbeaten in 11 fights uh, so there is a risk in there but 
obviously we've weighed up all the pros and the cons and this is a fight I'm definitely going to be victorious in. Make no means about that. Tonight is the night I'm definitely going to be victorious. I'm 100% sure that I will be victorious. So your tactics will be what exactly? To hit and not be hit. Just to hit him, nice fast combinations and move. Don't let him get himself stunned. If I let him plant himself in front of me, that's when I'm going to be in trouble. So it'll just be too big and strong for me to do that. So I'm just going to have to throw him shots and move. How will you beat him? I'll beat him with my, my skills. Uh, I'm a talented fighter and I will beat him with my skills. Cool, calm and collected. Well, as you can see from the tail of the tape, two unbeaten fighters, so something's got to give tonight. And one crucial factor could well be the two stone weight differential between the two fighters. As far as Krentz is concerned, how much of a disadvantage does that put him at? I don't think so. I really don't believe that he's thinking about anything like that. His main object in there, he knows he's going against a former uh, Olympic champion, and he knows that it could be, this is gravy right now for him. Just imagine what would happen if it's an upset here tonight. I mean, uh, Harrison has to start right from the beginning again. So this guy here, uh, he's hoping for that. I'm quite sure. And what are the chances of an upset? Uh, I'm not sure. I hope <laughs> because like I said earlier, you know, he's just coming off a fresh win. And uh, it depends on the strategy because, again, what's the important thing about this fight, Harrison is a southpaw. And can this guy fight a southpaw? Okay, well, we shall see. You better go and commentate along with Jim Neely. Introducing him firstly in the blue corner. He's wearing the blue and the white trunks. He's undefeated as a professional with 11 wins from 11 contests. He weighed in yesterday at 15 stone, 9 and a half pounds, and he comes to the ring as a former ABA champion from Chesterfield, uh, Mark Crane. And he's a man in the cross ring in the red corner. He's wearing the white trunks trimmed with red. He's undefeated as professional with four wins coming by four contests. Three wins inside the scheduled distance. He tipped the scales yesterday at exactly 18 stone. And he enters the ring as the reigning Olympic champion from Wembley. Presenting Audley A4 Harrison. Your time for this contest is Mr. Greg Yu, and your referee in charge of the action is one of the world's leading referees, Mr. John Keane of Northampton. You both received your instructions in the dressing room. You know what I expect of you. Shake hands, come out boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, six three-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Terrific atmosphere here in Excel, the Exhibition Centre, London, for the fifth professional contest of the Olympic Super Heavyweight Champion, the man in the white trunks and blazing with red, Audie Harrison. And I think the interesting thing about Audie Harrison, first of all, Marvin Hagler, is that he's down to 18 stones. He's lost four times from his last contest, so he's not only moving in the right direction professionally, he's getting himself in a great shape. Well, you know, I like the way how uh, Clint's is uh, moving because what he has to do against the southpaw is move to his right, keep moving to his right, and use a straight right hand and a left hook, which I haven't seen right yet, but he's moving in the right direction. I believe that the weight uh, factor is not a big point as long as he uses the speed. Well, there's the speed of that left hand that uh, took him to Olympic silver heavyweight gold and again into the face of Prince, who's conceding, well, over 30 pounds in weight. The 1999 ABA Cruiserweight Champion, which is the uh, 13 and a half stone division in those days. Well, Prince is very game, has come in as a, a late substitute for Dominic Negus, who had a viral infection. Well, you and know, this, is the, this is one of these things, Marvin, where 
Krenz has absolutely nothing whatsoever to lose. Remember yeah, with the last fight when Junior's long, when uh, <laughs> when Junior's long, when Harrison hit him with that straight left hand. I never even seen a shot that quick, but he might use the same shot tonight, which I'm predicting that straight left hand to get this guy out of here. If this guy goes to his left, that's a bad move. There's the left hand that I'm talking about. Watch your straight left hand. Well, Krenz, uh, as the wily old Dennis Hobson looking after him, and they quite fancy this, and interestingly, Dennis Hobson has got a bet of a thousand pounds on Krenz at 25 to 1. So if Krenz could pull off a major surprise, Dennis Hobson will be doubly delighted. He'll have a man who's defeated the uh, Olympic super heavyweight champion, and he'll be 25,000 pounds better off. But we have a fair old way to go. This is scheduled for six three-minute rounds. We're into the last minute of the first. And Harrison being nice and patient. You see, Harris is not afraid of this guy. I understand that they were sparring partners at one time also. But it's not important. This guy here, Clint is what, what he's got to do is he's got to move in tighter because he's just throwing his punches and they're just missing. They're too far out. He's got to move in with that jab. Well, last time out, Harrison was uh, completely dwarfed by a man who was taller than him and several stones heavier than him this time it's eyeball to eyeball but as we've said before Harrison enjoying a considerable weight advantage but it's good to see Harrison back in the ring so quickly that was a great left hand that was the left hand no, Brent says no Brent say no. <laughs> says no I wasn't hurt but there's a look in his eye that says oh dearie me what have I let myself in for I have a feeling coming up to the end of the round and very much uh, first blow to Harrison you know what I hate, Jim? I hate when a guy touches gloves after uh, the bell rings. I mean, it shows a little friendliness there, you know. I like when you got to stay mean. Well, Harrison certainly has got that mean look about him. He took his time coming into the ring. A long, purposeful walk. There was that left hand. How can Krenz say that didn't hit him? Good shot, as much a push as anything else, but there's no doubt in the accuracy. And um, there's the other one now. The speed of that really was quite exceptional. Harrison has got very fast hands. Mm -hmm. Bell Torrance and uh, Kenny Croom in his corner. And uh, no doubt about who uh, won that particular run. So Harrison in this is fifth professional contest, looking to make it five in a row. Mm -hmm. And just out of shot, a man who did go all the way. Well, the British heavyweight Frank Bruno watching on with that great interest. Seconds out. So Krenz has got the power. Two. Well, you know, the first round, you got to get that nervous things out of your system. So let's see what he does now, Krenz. Well, Krenz, in 1998, when Oli Harrison was winning the second of his uh, British ABA super heavyweight titles, was uh, runner-up in the light heavyweight division. Harrison hasn't uh, put on too much in the way of weight since then. Krenz really has bulked up, but he's still falling short of Harrison's size. He's going to start moving in with the punch, Krenz. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. He's a little too afraid of uh, what Harrison's got to deliver. You know, this guy's got 70 amateur fights underneath his belt. I mean, there's no reason why he can't use his experience. And he's got uh, 11 straight wins as a professional, albeit uh, just the two inside the distance. But he comes here after winning just a uh, 10 days ago a six rounder against the uh, Nottingham Journey and Gary Williams maybe not the preparation for this contest well you know what I understand Jim is that this guy uh, Chris excuse me but this guy's got a tough chin I mean right there it just shows he went down there but he got back up and he's saying to, he's saying to himself hey you didn't hurt me Harrison just taking his time, moving the head ever so slightly, and you do get the feeling that Harrison reckons that the big punch is going to win this for him. This is what he's got to do, Prince. He's got to keep throwing those right hands like that against the southpaw. Either a good right hand and the left hook, and keep moving to your right. Well, Prince is allowing that left foot of his to get inside the right foot of the southpaw, and that's what he doesn't want to do, Marvin. Yeah, but for me, Jim, they're both reaching. They're not stepping in with their punches. Neither one of them. taking the eight count. Harrison trying to out jab his man. Looks massive Harrison but his condition is improving all the time. Still bearing that rather nasty scar around uh, the right side of his torso where he had to have a, an operation. 
Hardly tearing a pectoral muscle. Right hand from Cranes, but a lovely piece but of defending by Harrison. Nice defending. See, I love that, you know, because he's keeping his left hand up there a little better so he can get the punches off a lot quicker. He realized he's fighting a, a much smaller and quicker opponent, so he's got to be quicker. I think right there he hurt Harrison. I mean, he hurt uh, Cranes with that punch. Yeah, Cranes' legs just went. That was a great right or left hand from uh, only Harrison. He knows he's going to win this one. It's just a matter of when. Cranes being very brave. 20 seconds to the end of the second. And we saw a couple of very interesting glimpses from Harrison. First of all, in terms of defense, and then more importantly, in terms of attack. Well, you see, every fight, I, I, what I've been watching Harrison, he's improving with every fight. He, now he's using defense. He's, he's joking with him a little bit, but he's keeping the hands up nice for the defense. This is important because now he's got a different type of fighter that's in there, that he's in there with today. Harrison needs to learn from every contest. There's no point going through something and not picking up at least one or two little points. Exactly. No fight are exactly the same. So Harrison forced his man to take a, an eight count in the middle of that round. And another uh, impressive round that was. This is Harrison coming forward. There was that left all the way through. Harrison held, hands held characteristically low, but he does deliver. That was a push start. It was a push down. I'm surprised that John Keane, if that was the one where he gave him the eight count, but that was a good left hand. No, but he was, was waiting a good for, shot. he was waiting for a good counter. That was a nice counter punch, you know, by Harrison. I thought, you know, he's waiting and sucking this guy in and then counter punch. Well, Marvin has given both runs uh, so far to uh, Odin oh, Harrison. He was look, looking nice and calm and relaxed. Back in action. Just over a month since his last contest against a man who's back in Second action. Out. Round within the last three. 10 days and there's a man who was in action last weekend he won his comeback contest Prince Nassim Hamid great to see both him and Frank Bruno at ringside supporting uh, Eddie Harrison you know for me Jim I still believe that this is a very interesting fight because anything still can happen if this guy Prince would stop backing up and start to learn how to punch going forward He's moving in the right direction, moving to his right. Now he's just got to fire his right hand in the left hook. This is what the way that you have to fight against the southpaw. Is he showing Harrison too much respect? I think he is, in my opinion. I mean, he's got to throw one, two, three, four punches, Prince. I mean, eventually, I, I believe that Harrison's going to finally catch him because Harrison, at the moment, is starting to move in with his punches. Prince doing some decent work with the jab, but they're not so far having any effect on the reigning Olympic super heavyweight champion. He's tried to get that left hand in once again, and centrally, Prince has closed them down. Well, Prince from uh, Chesterfield, just 25 years old. Well, for me, on my part, I think that for Prince, uh, this is a great experience. Uh, you know, for 11 pro fights, I mean, and I know this guy's got a, a, a good, tough chin, is that's what they say. But we have to see about that, because he's never been in there with a guy like Harrison. <laughs> Certainly not as big and as strong. And he's been in against guys who, like himself, are probably even more uh, genuine cruiserweights than heavyweights. Yeah, but I do agree with you. Harrison's looking too confident. It's just a matter of time for him to lay that big punch. Straight left hand, that's what I'm looking for. Harrison just moving one way and then the other, trying to allow Krenz to come into him. He's trying to suck this guy to throw that right hand so he can weave over it and then counter with his own overhand left. Harrison again drops the hands and again moves backward quite nicely as Krenz comes in. Good short with a right hand from Krenz. Harrison says, is that the best you've got, I think? Well, I think Harrison knows that he's much bigger. It's just a matter of time of just tracking this guy down and waiting for him to throw the right hand and counter over with the straight left hand. That's what he wants to see, like that. This is what he's waiting for. Good combination by Harrison. Left and then a couple of rights, one of them from underneath. See, one thing I like what Sense is doing, Sense is doing, is that he's not moving to the left. He's moving away from Harrison. Now he's moving to the wrong side. Well, he's got himself caught on uh, one of those straight shots right through his blood, blood to the nose of he's Chesterfield's Mark Prince. He's got to get back on those legs again and start moving to the right. He caught Harrison with a left, but Harrison didn't even blink. Prince 
It looked like he probably busted Chris's nose. I mean, I see blood dripping there. Well, that was a very, very hard shot. Straight through the guard of the younger man from Chesterfield. And Harrison, now 30 years old, looking reasonably comfortable midway through the scheduled six-rounder. Krenz got through with a very good short right hand. That's but the right hand. This is what he has to do more. Krenz has to throw more of those right hands and stay to the right hand, right side. And that last left of Harrison, I'm quite sure, was the one that caused all the problems with Mark Krenz's nose. Well, you know, another good run there to say, Jim, Harrison. It, you know, I'm a southpaw too, and it's not easy fighting us guys. <laughs> do you want to get in there? No. Oh, well, I would love to, but I'm, I'm, I'm retired. <laughs> Corners, 10 seconds. Second out, round four. So midway through this uh, contest, which is uh, scheduled for six three-minute rounds. And at this stage, uh, Harrison, I would suggest Marvin, needs the work out I as much as he needs the victory. I was going to say the same to him. It looks like he just needs the work. You know, uh, get past the six rounds. That's what he wants to do. Show the crowd, give them a good show. You know, using a nice, snappy left hand. And uh, he's keeping good defense, uh, what I like about him. And he's staying focused. He's right looking him right in the eyes. Waiting for the shot. He's, he's waiting for Seth Prince to move the opposite direction and then move right into his left hand. Well, he caught him with a oh. right Harrison and well done to Prince. He got Prince. straight back. Good left from the bigger man, Harrison. Prince on the turn. Took a hard right again. Harrison's trying to stop it up. He needs to just take a shot. He's not going to too accurate. Harrison, I hope that Harrison don't get too careless in there because this guy, he's got nothing to lose. Harrison with the hands done. See, that's what to you know, now this guy here, after he start to smell blood, which I used to love, then you start to get angry and you, you want to you want to bloody this guy's nose too. Let's match him up. <laughs> well, coming up to the midway point in this fourth round and uh, the liveliest round so far. Prince uh, unfazed by a couple of good hard Harrison shots. Well, you know, I believe that uh, Prince. Uh, He's really giving good account of himself. I mean, he's not running. You know, he's, he, he wants to win. You know, just that uh, Harrison is just too big and, and he's sharp. He's using great defense on him. Well, everybody reckoned that Mark Krenz was going to come forward and perhaps is uh, a much better opponent than the man he replaced, uh, Dominic Negus, who would have been a little bit too static, perhaps. I believe if uh, Krenz... Uh, keeps this kind of attack and going forward there you go that's what I'm trying to say that something's going to happen soon well that was a good shot by Prince well that's a wake up call for Harrison <laughs> well let's see if he hears it Prince has tapped him again with a left hand and Harrison's had to cover up and this is not a good spell for Harrison Prince putting on the pressure in round four and Harrison really did get caught and it's Harrison who's hanging on I think he got hit with that shot there, you There's know. There's no doubt about that, Marvin. Right. Harrison did get hit. This kid's got to keep the pressure. Prince looking for that right hand again, and Harrison is really covering up. And Harrison fans on their feet. Has he regained his composure? Well, he's doing the old Muhammad Ali, rope it dope to trick you and suck you in and then catch you with a good one. Yeah, he tried that corkscrew right hand that came from down towards his bootlaces, but it was well off target. Well, and this has not been a bad run for Prince. Harrison, Harrison, Harrison go acknowledges back that. Harrison, Harrison has said, hey, well done, kid. Very good, kid. I tell you, he's got to go back to defense and then go back to basics. Well, that run, I reckon, might just have been uh, Prince's run. I still gave that round to uh, Harrison. Even though he got caught with that shot, I still gave it to him. He's only a second out of the, before the end of the bell. Well, Harrison, I still gave Harrison. Harrison comes one. storming forward. Prince uh, <laughs> just clipped him on the chin. And Harrison on the back foot. And he's got to keep those hands up. Because he's uh, getting caught by a man who's 30-odd uh, nice. pounds lighter. And there was a left hand from Krentz went in. And for the first time in this contest, Harrison has been really rocked. Well, because I believe that Harrison was expecting Clinch to throw a right hand, and he didn't throw a right hand, he threw the left. Well, Harrison uh, getting that run. Clinch certainly more than ruffled his feathers. Round five. 
Or has Harrison, Harrison taken his little breather in this contest? Or is he going to have to work even harder to dispose of the, the gallant man from Chesterfield, Mark Krentz? And Krentz, remember, unbeaten in 11 professional contests. Well, you know, Jim, this is very funny. Did you see how Harrison came out and wanted to touch clubs with Krentz right away? That's a sign of weakness and also a sign of saying, well, you got a good one in there, kid, this time, so now I want to get you back. Well, he's got to pick up the pace again. In that last round, he wasn't throwing enough combinations. It was all singles, and he's got to be busier, Marvin. He started forgetting about his defense again. He started getting too cocky. You can't get cocky in there. Ben's still bleeding very slightly from his nose. Harrison looking for the opening with that big left hand of his. If I was Prince, I tell you, I would continue doing the same thing what I did in that last round, putting the pressure on Harrison and making him fight, and then trying to find that opening. Krentz looking for that opening. Harrison has got to keep that uh, right of his up because Krentz did catch him in the last round exactly. with a very good left, and that's the classic counter against the side pole. Exactly, that left hook. That's what I said. The right hand was the only throw of the south pole and the left hook. Harrison is keeping the left hand up nice and high, but he's dropping that right hand. Well, Harrison coming up to the midway point in round five. Hasn't thrown anything desperately meaningful so far. Well, he's getting rest out there, Jim. <laughs> He's trying to recover here from that last punch. Crunch has got to keep that, that attack going. Keep that attack going. Go in there, fire, and look for that opening shot. Not one punch at a time. Harrison's punch is falling a little bit on the short side. He's certainly taking the foot off the pedal in this one. You don't imagine that Harrison could be getting tired right now. It's only the fifth round. Well, if he's going to go all the way, he's got to get past six rounds. He's got to get past eight and then ten and then twelve. He's got to learn how to step in with those punches. He's throwing them too far away. 45 seconds to go. And then one more round. Prince comes out of that clinch and breathes in, blowing very heavily. But he's put in a terrific performance. Well, his nose also is starting to bleed a lot, a lot, uh, a lot more. And it's hard to breathe out your nose when you're bloody like that. you got to breathe out your mouth. Well, Harrison using his sheer bulk to swing his man round. And referee John Keane had a wee word with him. Nice and quiet about it. But then again, Jim, you don't want to keep your mouth open because you get one good punch. That might be your KO. And that's when the jaw goes as that's well. When the <laughs> Ten seconds to go. Brent still coming forward. He's got a very good fifth round and one more to go. And Harrison has not quite regained his composure from that good left hand. Oh, it's Krentz after the bell. That was a straight left hand after the bell. You know, I have to give that round there to uh, Flint. Uh, I thought that he won that round. I mean, if he keeps this aggressive with going, I mean, it might be a kind of a strange finish here. Well, not too much uh, between the two of them in terms of uh, punches thrown, but uh, Krentz in particular moving the body was the more accurate and uh, had an altogether, an altogether better round. A little bit of action from that round. Harrison just missing, missing with those shots and Krentz moving backward very nicely and keeping out of range. Well, it was a very skillful round from Mark Krentz. But Jim, see, you can see that uh, Harrison's got to step more in and put that big body weight right behind his left hand and he knocked this guy out he's like reaching with it he's just touching him second out sixth and last round this should be a fighting round this one well Arby Harrison certainly leading this one and looking to make it uh, five successive professional wins and deny Mark Krenz from Chesterfield 12 successive professional wins but Harrison has to do a wee bit more he had a very good opening couple of rounds. He had Krenz in all sorts of trouble. Well, you know, before he got himself caught, and he hasn't quite recovered from that. I was kind of uh, worried in the beginning that maybe Krenz uh, wouldn't move in the right direction, but he's been doing a very good job on keeping Harrison off balance. Moving to his uh, left, and then find the right hand and the left hook. Uh, I'm very impressed with that. i just like to see him get back to the inside and start working on punches to four, five, six punches at a time. Find that opening. Better work from Harrison, a couple of good jabs, and he's uh, kept that right hand up as Krenz has tried to come over with the left. 
Glenn's finding it harder now to get inside than he had in the previous couple of rounds. But Prince is certainly not going to go away. Well, when I see Harrison, by being a sophomore, he's got to move more to his right. And what he's been doing to set his man up for that straight left hand. See, he's got to move to that side, to his lovely, right hand side. Lovely a short, sophomore. lovely little short little clip from the uh, sophomore right of Harrison. The best punch of this run so far. But Jimmy's standing right in front of him. He's got to move to his right. Now he's moving right into the right hand of Prince. This is a bad move for a sophomore. Better by Harrison. That was a nice throw that time. Needs more of the same. Prince has given him a real good fight. Better by Harrison. Prince's mouth comes open. Starting to blow a little bit. Harrison has about a, a minute in which to finish this contest. But Prince looks like he may well hang on. Well, he's got nothing to lose, Jim. He's got to go for broke. It's been a terrific contest for Prince. Well, there, that was a good move right there. It showed that he wasn't afraid of Harrison. Good footwork by Harrison getting off the ropes. Solid left from Harrison. Haven't quite been enough of him, though, I'm sure, for his own liking. But I believe that left hand, I think that hurt since I could right then. I tell you, I felt it from ringside. That was a very <laughs> short, it traveled about six or seven inches. I see, like that. the old Joe Lewis punch. <laughs> six inches. 20 seconds to go. Prince has survived what a lot of people thought he might not. And indeed, he's made Harrison work pretty hard. And that's exactly what Harrison has needed. This is what he needs. If he's going to go on to fight for championship or fight other contenders, uh, better raking, uh, he needs fights like this here with different styles. That's what makes great fighters. While Krams has done well, Harrison has won it. But Gallant Mark Krams goes back to his corner, his nose bloody, nasty bit of grazing underneath his left eye. And Aldi Harrison came through on a different couple of rounds in four and five. And I think Krams's face tells its uh, own story. Harrison has come through another uh, six runs, having gone less than two the last time. Glimpses there of the Harrison that won the Olympic title, but we need to see more glimpses, don't we? Well, yeah. I, you know, look at, I'm just looking at the body shot. Right there, I see that left to the body. That really took the energy out of him in the late rounds. Well, the Harrison victorious for the uh, fifth time in his uh, so far short uh, professional career. He's had problems with injury, the career has been somewhat truncated. He perhaps should have had seven or eight contests under his belt at this stage, but he's had five and he's won all five, and Aldi Harrison stays unbeaten. Ladies and gentlemen, after six hard rounds of boxing, the referee John King scores contest for Mark Crench, 55 points. Audley Harrison, 58 points to win in there. And still undefeated, Audley A-Force Harrison! And ladies and gentlemen, your appreciation for a very tough and game boxer indeed there, Mark Crench! Audley, you won. Marks out of 10. What do you give yourself? Uh, well, it's hard to be critical straight after the performance. You know, we look at the video. But definitely, you know, all respect to uh, Mark Crench, an unbeaten fight, 11 fight. And he showed his record ain't, ain't fake. You know, he's a former national champion. And he came in here to, and, and gave a good account of himself. But I think I won most of the rounds. And, uh, you know, his speed was a bit hard to catch up with. But, you know, I got there in the end. And uh, I think that six rounds there was a good six rounds. What I need, you know, I'm coming back from being out for six months. So. All in all, I think that was a good, uh, reasonable performance. Mark, what did you reckon of? On, yeah, it was a good fight, I enjoyed it. He's very well strong. Anyone who says he's not strong, he's not, but I'm only young, so I've got plenty of time left yet. 25, I'm a baby. Still a you, you said to me beforehand he can whack a bit. You know how he punches from sparring. Yeah. What about when you actually get in the ring? Is, 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 has he got a big punch, actually? Yeah. Yes, yeah. But that, that one's knocked down, what put me down, I don't think. Yeah, so, slip. slip. Audley, you said you won most of the rounds, you probably did, but what about the fourth round? He, he had you going there a bit, we can show you, and I'd just like you to give us a little reaction to this fourth round. Well, at all times in there, you know, I had my, fa I had my faculties going. Uh, you know, I, never, I mean, that's a good shot. 
But at the end of the day, that's heavyweight boxing. Uh, no, you know, people say, well, Harrison don't take punches in there. It's heavyweight boxing. You're not going to get in the ring and do six rounds with a former national champion and not take no punches. But as you can see, at no point, I mean, I left myself open there. That's something we're going to work on. But that's heavyweight boxing. You know, I didn't go down. I stayed in there and I was able to come back strong at that round. Uh, and you'll be aware that had he been a bigger puncher, you would have been in more trouble, wouldn't you? Listen, no, it's not about being in trouble. No, well, it is a little bit, isn't it? If, well, if, 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 if he'd been a bigger puncher, you would have yeah, been in yeah, more but, trouble. Well, you've got to realise, some of the greatest fighters, they all go down. Felix Trinidad goes down in every fight, he gets back up. You know, I don't mind going down. It's part of boxing. You could go down. As you see with Lennox Lewis, he went down in his fights. He got back and, and, and won the next fight. It's not a bit, you're going to take punches in a fight, and you're going to have to work out all different kind of opponents. And this was a different style and I was able to overcome it. OK, two, two final questions to you. Stamina, yeah. um, did you feel tonight that you, you were 100% fit? Because maybe you, you were looking at a, a little bit as though you could do with a few more sort of miles on the road. What do it's you reckon? A, there's a long way to go. There's a long way to go. Bearing in mind, I, I was six months out and I only done two rounds with my last opponent, Junius Long. We went straight back to the gym. And no matter how many rounds you do in sparring, everyone will tell you it doesn't account for actually match practice. You need to get in the ring. It's my second fight now in, in, in quick succession, and the next I'm only going to get sharper and sharper. All right, I'll ask you what you're going to do next, but Mark, uh, a, a quick final thought from you. Honestly, how far can he go? All I'd say. Um, but, but go on. You'll meet him for the time. British okay. champion any time, but then I'll be there to take it off him. DJ, okay, we love you. Uh, and a final thought, Audley. Um, next opponent, this chap had won 11 out of 11. So, so where do you go in terms of sort of stepping it up again? Well, that's something you've got to talk to Colin about. You know, he picks the opponents. But obviously, with the whole team, Fell, Kenny, we're going to look at, the, you know, a great camp. Thanks to Fell and Kenny for in camp. You know, we look at the video. At the end of the day, I'm 5-0 and now. I'm 5-0. I've, I've gone in against an unbeaten fighter. I'm 4-0. I've gone in against a guy 11-0. And lost a couple of rounds, took a few punches, but that's heavyweight boxing. But, but just to answer my question, he'd won 11 out of 11. Do you sort of look to see a boxer now that's maybe won 16 out of 16 or, or one no, defeat no, in 16? I mean, how, how does it work? Well, you're going to have to talk to Colin about that. You know, he could tell you how it works. I'm still a novice in this game. That's a former world champion, and he knows what he's doing when he's picking his opponents. And, uh, you know, I'll just get in there and train for the next fight, hopefully come back a bit sharper, hopefully look a bit better, and obviously correct some of the mistakes that I've made tonight. All right, well done.